Good morning, everybody. It is Kathy Hake here at the Magical Urban Vegetable Garden. And I'm just going to see if I can get, uh, make sure I see the comments, because I want to see your comments when you actually be able to. But if I don't, just because Facebook's got lots more changes happening here, I'll be sure to answer them later. So it's good to see you here. It's Sunday morning. And I wanted to talk some more the, about uh, perennial herbs and vegetables and fruits and stuff in the garden. It was a, a topic I started earlier this week for those of you that are on my email list. And um, hey, Stephanie, how are you? Um, and uh, I, I just wanted because I just want to keep on talking about it. Um, there's a bunch more things I've added to this list just because it's something that's been on my mind. And so I'm going with it and I feel like I need to share it. And I hope this helps you. Um, so, you know, maybe you know somebody that helps, so please share this Facebook Live or the list. I have put in the link, um, a link to a uh, um, Google Doc uh, PDF that I started this morning um, listing a whole bunch of stuff. So it's not completely organized yet. Um, you know, it was just a whim. So uh, you can check through to that, you know, when you're welcome to print it up, scribble it out, um, take it, grow, take it plant shopping with you, uh, use it when you're planting your garden, all this good stuff. So um, a few things that I, I want to cover here about perennials and such. Um, if you don't know, perennials are plants and herbs and things that come back year after year on their own. Once you've planted them, um, they come back sometimes for many years, sometimes for decades, depending on the plant. And uh, so you want to make sure when you are putting them in your garden that you select a good space for them and a space that you're okay with them permanently being there because you're not going to be changing them every year, right? Like you would do with annuals, which means that you would sow them annually every spring or summer or whenever it is that you, you put them in. Um, so they need a home and you want to research it. Some do well in, you know, some sun versus partial shade. You, you know, you're going to have to figure out what it is that your your garden area actually needs or your deck or your pot. You know, there's some things that grow better in pots and some that don't. Um, so I've on the list that I, I posted, um, I started dividing up um, the list from just vegetables and herbs. I had just originally done a big list into actually divided lists so that you can actually check out herbs or vegetables um, and things that are self-seeding annuals. So they're not technically, um, you know, perennials, but if you plant them once, they will seed and self-sow. And so essentially you get them back year after year. And, um, you know, I've had some really surprising things come back and, uh, you know, it's just less work and you're, you're, let, you're just kind of working with nature and letting it do that. So some of the things that, um, you know, a lot of people, I'm just going to go to my list here. Um, you can check that out as well, if you like. Uh, I mean, there's some things that are classified as herbs that, you know, we don't even think about. But I think I really feel that every household should have, whether it's in pots or in a corner of your your walkway or whatever it is. And that's things like chives, garlic chives, um, you know, Chinese onions. Uh, you can plant things like Egyptian walking onions, um, uh, herbs like mint. Um, well, be careful with mint. Mint can take over and I find it easy enough to pull up, but it is all over my yard. You might just want it in a pot. Um, similar with lemon balm. Lemon balm is an amazing herb and you might want a great big planter of it, but it will, it will creep out on its own and kind of take over stuff. Um, but other herbs are like um, thyme and sage and rosemary and all these, provided you kind of have them in the proper zone, um, will come back year after year. Uh, I didn't realize until a few years ago that sage does this. I've planted sage. Well, I got to prune mine here. I'll show you guys that another time. Um, but I planted this like four years ago and it's just been coming back year after year. I had no idea um, how absolutely incredible fresh sage was compared to the stuff that you get uh, on the grocery store shelf, right? And once you've had it, had it fresh, like you, you just don't, you don't go back. It's an amazing thing. Um, but some other things that we don't think about, um, like I put a, I put a list in here for, you know, edible flowers even, and things that we don't um, think of for, for being able to eat. Um, so things like daylilies, daylily bulbs are incredibly edible and back like especially in the second world war or i probably even the first if you do a little bit of research um 
people ate them. You could take and roast them like onions and they just kind of have a root flavor to them or whatever. Um, but they're completely edible, right? Just make sure that they don't mix with other um, bulbs and stuff that you have because not all bulbs are edible, right? So you might want a specific plot for being able to, you know, if you want to try out, um, you know, daylilies. Um, hosta shoots, okay? This is another one that I actually didn't know of until just a couple years back. I hadn't realized. Um, but if you take a look on Asian recipes and look up, just Google hosta shoot recipes, go on Pinterest. Pinterest is your friend here. Those um, wily and intelligent um, Asian ancestors, um, are, are amazing for making use of stuff like this. And they have some really incredible recipes for using hosta shoots in early spring while they're nice and tender. Try them out. Maybe you have hostas in your yard already and you can already, you know, try some of this stuff out for your, you know, spring lunch or something. Um, things like nasturtiums. Nasturtiums, now that this would be what I would call a self-seeding annual. Normally we plant them from year to year. However, they put out an incredible amount of seeds. And I have found out that if you let them go to seed in a corner of your greenhouse or garden, they will self sow and sprout up the following spring and you can take and maybe transplant them wherever you want. But they're um, super edible. They've got a very peppery taste to them. So it's nice if maybe for health reasons you can't actually use uh, pepper. Um, but you like that flavor. So you can add it to your salads or stir fries or, you know, chop it up, sprinkle it in soups, whatever it is that you like. There's, there's lots of edible, um, edible flowers out there. Scarlet runner beans is one we don't think of. Usually we all use scarlet runner beans as um, annuals. We just plant them every spring. But if you have them in the right place, um, they can grow for years. They'll come back year after year. Both the leaves and the shoots and sprouts are edible. You know, you can use them again, in your stir fries or salads or, you know, stoops and stews. And, and uh, you know, they, they look beautiful as well. Um, but um, now I've never grown them for this long, but um, I'm told that they can actually last up to 15 or 20 years. So, you know, something new to learn every day. Um, let's see here, globe artichokes. We don't think of artichokes when we see those great big things in the store as, um, you know, flowers, but they are. They also need a permanent spot because they come back year after year. And of course, berry bushes, um, uh, berries and berry bushes, things like strawberries. If, if you only have a small space, you get a strawberry um, planter or two. I mean, they're, they're a classic for a reason. They've been around for hundreds of years. And uh, they'll come back year after year, wherever it is that you have them. You can have strawberries. And this includes, you know, berry bushes like, you know, your raspberries and blackberries and gooseberries and currants. And, and a lot of them, um, you can get ones that don't grow that big, depending on the type. And so you can have a big planter and, you know, look for ever bearing types, especially if you're really limited on space so that you can go out, you know, every day or two and pick a few and it keeps you in, in, you know, fresh, fresh fruit, right? Um, but some of the greens and stuff that we have in our gardens, and we actually plant them as annuals, you know, every spring, um, things like watercress and sorrel and, um, things like your, um, spinaches and Swiss chard, um, a lot of those are what we call um, biannuals. So you plant them once and you get a good crop of leaves. But if you leave them in the ground, they'll pop up again first thing in the spring. You can use the fresh leaves. I've got some coming up in the garden out here. Radicchio is also one. It will, it's actually considered a perennial, although most of us plant it as an annual. Um, but uh, they'll send up uh, flower stalks on the second year um, and so if you have an heirloom type you could actually save the seeds from it right um, so for things like this if you take and plant you know a, you know a row of say Swiss chard one one spring and have it year round and then have a row the next spring you will have a continual turnover of Swiss chard year after year after year right um, and that works with like um, kale and like I said, um, your spinaches and probably even some kinds of lettuce. I'd have to look into that a little more. Um, 
things like Welsh onions. Um, Welsh onions are like a perennial green onion. You plant them once, give them their own nice little space and they will continue to spread and put out bulbs, but you can have green onions whenever you like, okay? Um, another one that's become really popular lately and I absolutely love in my garden is um, Egyptian walking onions. Now they're kind of funny because they send up these long stalks. I have found that a good um, tomato cage help keeps them upright instead of just flopping all over. Um, but they get these funny little bunches of like hard, on, hard uh, mini onions on top. And what they normally do is they flop over and they self-sow those little bunches will send up new shoots and so they walk, right? Which is why they're called what they are. Um, but those little bundles of, of um, hard onions on top, you can also use uh, like you would, um, uh, oh good Lord, I'm blanking out on the name here, um, shallots. Okay, you can use in recipes that you might use for shallots as well as the shoots you can use and play for, you know, for green onions and all that stuff. There are so many things out there that can make our gardening easier. And especially when we're looking um, at, you know, shipping and food shortages happening and stuff. Um, plus, you know, a lot, a lot of us are just, you know, trying to be more environmentally friendly, not shipping our food as far, having better nutrition. We, we know what goes into our food in the backyard. It is super handy to have um, them just growing right outside. And we all have jobs, we all have lives, we don't all necessarily want to spend, you know, you know, 20 extra hours here and there doing, you know, all the things that traditionally went into you know farming and gardening um, our lives are very different from what was in our great grandfather's and grandmother's times right so these are things that make it easier and i'm going to um i'm going to uh, go in and play around with this list to, uh, some more today um, so that you know because now i've got all these ideas going and i really want to share them with you and you're always welcome to message me leave me a comment below and i'll be sure to put my email in the google doc as well you're always welcome to email me with ideas or even things that you um, have perennially growing in your garden that i haven't added in yet um, you know i'd like to make this a really complete list for anybody that needs it so feel free to share it and thank you for being here um, i look forward to talking to you again and hearing from you Bye for now.